we've talked about the brain machine interface data in the abstract. And uh, what I'm going to do in this little segment here is uh, load up some data and we're, we're going to take a look at what's uh, actually inside. So let's transition to our Python. So the, I'm starting from the skeleton that I've uploaded uh, to your Git repository. Uh, the, uh, the imports are fairly standard set of uh, imports. Uh, some of them we'll, we'll use here in this video, others we'll be using in subsequent videos. Uh, the one thing I wanted to uh, point out very quickly. Um, I've grown tired of, uh, of having to type figure size whenever I'm creating figures, uh, and likewise for font size. So now I've configured things so that uh, th these will appear as uh, defaults. So, so plot RC par params has a whole set of parameters associated with it. You can go in and modify those as, uh, as you'd like. <clears throat> so let's execute that. The, uh, the next cell here is all about reading uh, a, a data set. Um, basically what it's doing is it goes out to a particular directory that you specify. Uh, you also specify a, a base file name and then it goes looking for all of the files with that base file name within the directory and loads them up and returns them to you as a list. So, so you can you feel free to, to stare at that uh, implementation. Uh, here's us using the, the data loader. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, execute that. Uh, the M1 folds, uh, this refers to uh, the neural data, the primary motor cortex data. Theta is the orientation of the shoulder and the elbow. D theta is uh, shoulder and elbow velocity torque uh, and time are, are the other ones that we'll work with. So, so you'll notice um, the, the directory name as, as earlier, uh, this might differ a little bit in your particular configuration. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're getting to ML practices from wherever you're executing your code. For, uh, for uh, specifying the, the prototype for the, for the name, uh, so this just says go out and look for all the files that are uh, named m1 underscore fold and then something on the right hand side. Each one of these is going to be a, a CSV file uh, and there is one such file for every fold uh, of data. So what we get back from uh, what we get back in this variable here is a, uh, a list of 20 items one item for each fold, and each of those items is a NumPy array that we can immediately turn around and start using. Let me execute that, and that might take a moment to go out to the disk to, to pull that up. And then I want to take a look at what's inside of some of these. So first off, let's look at uh, what the length is of this uh, array. M1 folds, so that's uh, 20. So each, so, so again, there's one element in this list per uh, data fold. So let, let's extract out uh, a little bit of data here. Uh, I'm going to take the first fold. Uh, take out the, the first fold. Um, time, these are just our timestamps. Uh, outs P is the, the desired output uh, for our positions. And V is our uh, desired output for our uh, velocity. Oops, and we need D theta there. Okay, so now that we've uh, pulled out the, the first fold, let's look at that shape. Uh, there are, in this particular fold, there happens to be uh, 1,193 different examples and uh, 960 columns. So that's, uh, remember that that is time, uh, time, which is 20 uh, time steps uh, by the number of neurons that we're listening to. 
All right, let's build a, a figure and look at the, the position data here. And notice that I don't have to specify a fig size. We'll plot uh, the, the, the zeroth column in outs P that corresponds to our shoulder uh, data. Let's blow this up one more. And, and the one column is our, uh, is our elbow. Let's go ahead and add that legend there, shoulder and elbow. And uh, the time dimension, these are in terms of seconds. And, and the horizontal uh, dimension is position. And everything is, uh, and these are orientations, these are in radians. All right, so let's look at that. So there is our, uh, our figure. One, one thing to note is that in time, there are indeed some gaps. So the, the really obvious one is from here to here. The, the plotting code is just uh, doing some linear interpolation. Uh, but any, any place where you have a, a break and, and just a line segment, that's, that's a, a, a time break there. Let's, let's also look at the velocity data here. So we're gonna look at outs V and this is velocity. So that's encoded in terms of uh, radians per second. If we execute that, that's a little bit hard to look at, but if we uh, set our x limb to something, uh, we're going to look at between 10 and 20 seconds there. Um, now, now you have a, a better uh, a better picture of what's going on. Again, you can see the time gap. So there's one right right there, one one right there. Um, this is not atypical for the shoulder and the elbow to, in some cases, work in phase with one another. Uh, and then in other times, they work out of phase. So in particular, we're kind of seeing that out of phase behavior um, here. Uh, here, they're, they're working in anti-phase. So they're working against each other and then back to out of phase for this last couple of movements. Okay, let's do one, one more figure here where we're going to look at position along shoulder versus position uh, along elbow. So we're, we're doing essentially a, a scatter plot. Oops. No more legend. X label then becomes uh, shoulder. And this is elbow. And X limb does not make any more sense here. Ah, it helps if I actually pull out the shoulder, the elbow data. All right, that, that, that makes more sense there. So, so in some sense, this you can think of this as a, uh, a top-down view of, uh, of the monkey's hand as it's uh, scribbling back and forth trying to hit those, uh, hit those targets. Uh, and and this, this also, so this, these kinds of views also give us a, a sense of uh, the, the kinds of behavior that the monkey is uh, producing. Okay, so that's a, a quick exploration uh, into the data. And now it's time to start working on some models. So that's the next video.